Welcome. Welcome, everybody. This is going to be a, an event that combines history and uh, live performance um, and film. We, but what I'm going to do first is introduce you to Joel Mills from the British Council, um, who is really the person responsible uh, for this event because she got Esther and Jung and I uh, together. So over to Joel Mills. I work in the British Council music team as a senior programme manager. I have to say, I'm really excited about today's project. And this has come about not just through me and the, uh, but a whole host of people working at the British Council in Vietnam and um, in London as well. So what we're going to do now is just, uh, well, I'm just going to explain a little bit about uh, the, the context for the show and what you're about to see. You're going to watch uh, the film made by Esther and uh, Jung um, using archive materials, using some uh, historical uh, witness recordings made by me. For those not in Hanoi, just imagine you're in sunny, beautiful Hanoi, it's just past 8 p.m. So it's a nice warm evening um, and you've you've just come out of this rather peculiar mind bending experience at the Manzi exhibition space, which is a lovely contemporary art space in the centre of the city. So imagine you're walking here into the exhib exhibition space. It's a very dark room. You walk towards a little box and you sit inside this box that surrounds you and kind of sort of blinkers your peripheral vision and you're presented with this film in front of you projected onto this kind of old school presentation um, screen and then in front we have an old radio period radio of which the sound for the film piece is projected out of Dear brothers and sisters, for the past years, the American Reserve Committee, the ABC, in cooperation with the Vietnamese, have prepared tapes for broadcasting the GIs in Vietnam. These programs have been a tremendous help in educating American soldiers as to why they were sent to Vietnam and what they can do about it. The American Reserve in Sweden, who have made these tapes, have been mostly uh, from white working class or student backgrounds. Yep. The film comprises all, all of found footage, um, so Creative Commons license footage that are found on the internet. I looked at over 400 films and in the final film there is excerpts from 52 films. And from the script and the subject of the film, I kind of broke that down into themes, topics, kind of visuals, um, that I thought might work so that I could use those as keyword searches on the internet and then create kind of this database of footage to, to use in the final edit. Your organisation could make the tapes consisting of currently popular music. You've now seen inside the gallery, you've seen the film itself. I'm now going to introduce you to one of, I suppose we need to call him a kind of historical actor. Um, in this context and you heard his voice in that film and let me just tell you a, a couple of things about uh, the story of Vincent and uh, some of his comrades. Vincent was one of the many thousands of men who deserted from the war in Vietnam and like many of those men he claimed asylum in Sweden so this is Vincent with the arrow pointing towards him uh, with members of the American Deserters Committee. And the next slide shows him on the front of the magazine of the Philadelphia Inquirer telling his story. How do you respond to it? Well, despite the film uh, doesn't show any of the atrocities that the Americans committed in, in Vietnam, it was still extremely moving and, and disturbing uh, but at the same time, hopeful. It was disturbing because this, the scene of the planes, uh, they're not bombing or anything, but I, I, the, I, I get flashbacks of the, the time and all the news clips and everything we saw about Vietnam and, and how, how uh, I guess uh, as I've gotten older, it affects me much more than I, uh, much more now. And, um, 
it's, it's saddening, uh, that part of it. Vince, the female voice that we hear in that film is that of Mrs. Hang Nguyen, who was one of the announcers on Liberation Radio. You wouldn't oh. have heard that at the time, but she was oh. one of the people who was making those broadcasts. It sort of gives the vision of uh, a determined people can do almost anything, and, and, and they did. And I was very happy that, that I could participate in the, that small way uh, to bring an end to the war despite the fact that millions of people were, were, were killed. Well, th there weren't too many choices at that time. Uh, you, uh, some deserters, uh, many deserters and drafters went to Canada and some went to France and some, some went to Sweden. And I saw some uh, articles in underground papers that, that you could uh, apply for asylum in these countries. And you were so politically inclined, Vince, that you went to offer your services to Hanoi. How did you do that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it seems so, especially at my age now, I, I don't understand how I did that. But <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I recall correctly, uh, as in all political uh, protest groups, in all protest, protest groups, uh, uh, there's someone or a group who says, now it's time for less talk and more action. And I sort of got connected with some people that wanted to do that. And so I said, well, we said, well let's contact the, 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 the uh, North Vietnamese mission in Stockholm and see if we can do something. So what was it then that they asked you to do? And what did you, what did you offer? And what, yeah. did they, what did they suggest? That, right. I, I offered to be a soldier. And, and like I said in the, in the film, maybe they thought I wasn't a very good soldier since I deserved it. But... <laughs> But I, I don't think that was the reason. <laughs> but they did ask us to make some tapes that they could send on Liberation Radio. And that was great. I, I, myself and a couple of friends started doing that. And there were about, about a half a dozen people involved in both writing and making the tapes. And we went with the tapes eventually to, to the uh, North Vietnamese mission in Stockholm. I okay. think it might be time, but we can actually, we'll see you in a moment as well, Young, yeah. as well. In the, there we are, there you are, and the floor is yours. And I think we should tell everybody to put, if they, they're using earphones, put them both in now. The voice of two actors I want to mention who have been very helpful in this: um, Lisa Bowerman and uh, and David Warner. I happen to know that Dave, David was in Sweden in in the late sixties, and so you know might have met Vince there without either of them knowing. He certainly encountered um, uh, Vietnam deserters at a, a in a square where everybody used to gather to have political conversations. Mm. If you want to know anything more about the project, then perhaps the best thing to do is follow us on Twitter, where we are Librad Project. So uh, look for us there and you'll um, you'll get to hear all the news about whether or not we can we can take this um, anywhere else. Um, and I know speaking for myself, um, how I wish I was with most of this audience in, in Hanoi, which is where I think most of you may be, and, and just how grateful I am to have been, to have been part of this um, and to have been treated so generously and mm. been involved in such a productive collaboration um, with the British Council and everybody at Manzi. And Vince Ostrollo, who is the man <laughs> whose life really is... is is the, is the story behind this <laughs> and I'm sure that the main thing we have all shared together here this afternoon is what an amazing man he is yes. so let's end mm -hmm. on that note I think thank you all for attending thank you thank, thank you. you so much